Hi, Ben Constable with you from Spark Systems. Today I'll be discussing visual modelling in Enterprise Architect, and the purpose of the presentation is to get you familiar with the tools and techniques you have available for effective diagramming. We'll start by learning how to really take control of the diagramming canvas. Then we'll look at some of the views that help us access, edit, and manage diagrams in the model. Finally, I'll share five of my top tips for rapid visual modelling. To help you make full use of the diagram canvas, I'll show you how to adjust the model information that's displayed in the various compartments of diagram elements. We'll then see how to leverage the Quick Linker to not only create and connect to new elements, but to rapidly connect with existing model elements as well. We'll then see what connector styles are available to us. And then some of the diagram modes, say for locking diagrams or viewing them in hand-drawn style or as a whiteboard. Enterprise Architect provides quite an array of diagram types, from the core UML structural and behavioural diagrams, to those we may use for enterprise architecture, business process modelling, mind mapping and so on. Now we create a new diagram at any time, simply using this icon in the project browser. For now though, we're going to borrow a sample from the Enterprise Architect example model. This is a simple class model for a hypothetical car rental system. Now let's assume I have the challenge of needing to present these concepts to a non-technical audience. Perhaps I'll hide the operations in this rent class, and these programming language like data types for each attribute, I could hide those. Well how do I do this without losing my original work? Well I'll simply create a copy of the original diagram using the project browser. I'll paste the diagram to make a simpler version of it. Now I can use some of Enterprise Architect's diagram display options to hide some of the compartments. For example, using the Elements tab, I'll hide the Operations compartment for each element on this diagram. Under the Features tab, I only want to show the name of the attributes for each class. And for the connectors, I'll simply suppress all labels. And now you see a simpler, cleaner diagram that I can present. But notice in doing this I haven't duplicated any of the underlying model elements. I'm simply showing a different view of the same underlying semantic model. Bear in mind that I can adjust the display of information on a per diagram element level using the feature and compartment visibility dialog. I could choose to display attributes or operations based on their scope, or even manually select individual attributes or operations to display. I can also hide features by their stereotype. Now this kind of thing can be useful if I've got system level elements that recur over many diagrams and I don't always want to show all of their details. Now let's assume we're going to expand the car rental system to handle other kinds of vehicles as well, like trucks. So I want an inheritance hierarchy for the different types of vehicles. I'll use the Quick Linker to help me build this up. Now we're probably familiar with this tool for quickly creating and connecting new elements, like so. Or for connecting between elements that already exist on the diagram, like this. Well now, here's a tip for our power users. When I want to select my target element, I can choose from one that exists somewhere else in the model. I do that by holding the Shift key. So I wanted a generalization, I hold Shift. An Enterprise Architect will prompt me to find the target element. I could make a search for it if I know part of its name, or just browse using the model tree presented. Now very quickly I've built up the inheritance hierarchy for my vehicle types. While we're thinking about connectors, let's have a look at the available line styles. Right-clicking the connector shows that I've used a vertical tree style. And this is typically what I'll do when modeling an inheritance hierarchy such as this. Sometimes I'll use one of the other options. Here I've expanded the inheritance hierarchy for light vehicles. I've included a number of subtypes here. In cases like this, I may sometimes use the lateral vertical 
tree style to neatly align the subtypes like so. Now this kind of diagram may be more familiar to our business analysts. It's a simple process that describes how we handle car rental requests. And as is default for such a BPMN2 diagram, it makes use of the orthogonal rounded line style. This simply means that the connector bends at 90 degrees and that the corners are rounded. Now here's a little tip for our power users on how to insert waypoints as we build up the connector. To do so, simply hit the shift key each time you want a waypoint. So hit shift now, there's my first waypoint. Hit shift again, my second waypoint, and again for my third, and so on, and now I create an activity with a sequence flow. Of course, I can edit the waypoints at any time later, simply by hovering over the line, holding down the control key and clicking. That inserts a waypoint and I delete them in the same manner. Now you may have wondered why is it that when my lines overlap I end up with a little line jump. Let me create an example here. I'll make a sequence flow. And you'll notice that at the intersection of my connectors, I have these little line jumps. This behavior was introduced in Enterprise Architect 9, and it can provide a really good visual cue, but as a presentation option, it can be turned on or off. Go to the Tools menu, Options, the Diagrams page, and you can enable or disable connector line jumps like so. Of course, we can just keep our diagrams neat and avoid the line jumps altogether. Now there are other connector styles available. If I go back to my mind map, you'll notice that I've used the Bezier line style, and this is the default for mind maps in Enterprise Architect. So there's a really quick review of the connector styles we have available. Now let's consider some modes that change the way we perceive a diagram or how we interact with it. Returning briefly to our process model, let's assume that we need to publish it in a black and white format, say for a standards document or even for a textbook. Well, I'll invoke the properties of the diagram and then leverage this whiteboard mode which was introduced in Enterprise Architect 9. Selecting this option changes the rendering of the diagram to a black and white format, much closer to that in which I'll publish. Similarly, the hand-drawn mode can change the way we think about a diagram. Let's return to our simple domain model. Assume now that we consider this diagram to still be in draft mode, so we want to get some feedback from our peers. Well, one way to encourage that is to render the diagram in hand-drawn mode. This really changes the way the diagram is rendered, away from enterprise architects, normal polished and regular format into something that looks like a draft. We can also combine modes. Another mode we'll consider is that of locked diagrams. Let's return to our mind map for a moment. You may have noticed that if I right click on a diagram I have the option to lock it and this can be really useful when I'm finished with the diagram and I don't want to accidentally change the layout of it in any way. This becomes more obvious when I show the diagram caption bar. You'll notice in the top left corner of any diagram that is locked there will be a little lock icon. This means that when I'm presenting information such as this mind map I can't accidentally drag the connector or move the elements around so it's really good in this scenario when you're presenting your visual model. Next, we'll consider some of the diagram views that Enterprise Architect provides to help us access, manage, and edit our diagrams. We'll start with the recently added ability to view multiple diagrams at once and to work between those diagrams. We'll look at how working sets help us to restore our context or open some favorite diagrams with the model. The list view is another example that can help business analysts, especially those more comfortable working in a spreadsheet-like environment. Then we'll look at the filter bar and the new structure compartment which were added with Enterprise Architect 10. 
With Enterprise Architect 9.3 came the ability to view multiple diagrams simultaneously. Assume, for example, I wanted to see the vehicle inheritance hierarchy alongside my original domain model. Well, I can simply tear the tab off the main view like so. Now assume I want to share elements between the diagrams. I want to pick up the new truck class and drag that onto the original diagram. Well, I can do so, and as I drag and drop, I'll be prompted do I want to move the element or create a link so that I'm not duplicating any model information. That's what I'll do. Then when I've finished, I can drop the diagram back onto the main view if I like. Now this works with any type of view in EA, say the list view for example, and any of the available dock positions can be used. Say I want to grab my mind map and permanently dock that under the project browser. I can do so and that'll help me keep context. So here's a really quick look at viewing multiple diagrams at once in Enterprise Architect. Let's have a look now at how Working Sets can help us. It's available under the View menu, Personal Tasks, and then the Working Sets tab. I'll create an example working set for the diagrams I want open with this model at startup. I'll include all the currently open diagrams, which I could reorder. I could add other views that aren't even open, including, say, a matrix profile. I'll just take the diagrams I've got currently open. Now I can affect the behavior of this working set, for example, tell EA to open these diagrams when the model starts. Notice if I close the project now, and then reopen it, Enterprise Architect automatically opens that working set for me. So that's just one example of how I can use working sets. Not to be overlooked in this context is the Model Views window, which also allows me to categorize diagrams, perhaps by role or lists of favorites, but I can share these in a collaborative modeling environment. I could even run the diagrams as a presentation slideshow directly in Enterprise Architect. Here's my mind map, which I can cycle through like so. So I tend to use working sets for personal favorites, whereas Model Views is an excellent collaborative tool for sharing sets of diagrams. An alternative to viewing the model as a diagram is to use Enterprise Architect's list view. This may suit business analysts who are used to editing in tabular or spreadsheet environments. I can quickly create new elements, for example a new business rule for my car rental system, without worrying about how it appears on a diagram. I can easily switch between the views, like so. There's the new test rule that I created. And I can switch between list view or Gantt view for tasks. You may have noticed the new filter bar in Enterprise Architect 10. Let's see how this can be put to use in our domain model. You'll notice that when I turn the filter bar on and select an element, only those other elements that are related to it are highlighted. On the other hand, if I type into the field, only those elements that match the name part I type are highlighted. It can be very useful for finding elements in a large diagram. The new structure compartment and the ability to display a nested diagram in an element will be of interest to our systems engineers. I won't address these features fully in this presentation, but it is worth noting briefly that the structure compartment lets you model some of the internal structure directly within a diagram element. I've done that here for our truck class. Notice that I can't inadvertently drag these elements outside of the structure compartment. Now you can display this compartment from the Feature and Compartment Visibility dialog. Right-click the element and set the option like so. And now we can also display nested composite structure diagrams in a dedicated compartment. Here's the more detailed view of our truck's internal assembly. Now I can display this diagram in a compartment of my truck class back on the original diagram. Let's have a look at that. I select Show Composite Diagram, and there I've got a detailed view on this diagram as well. Now I'll share five of my top tips for rapid visual modeling, starting with the Show and Snap to Grid functionality. Assume I have to recreate my domain model from scratch, so I've got a new diagram to do that. One option I recommend you use to help you neatly arrange elements is the Show Grid option. And in combination with that, either use the Standard Grid Snap To Placement or the Smart Placement option. Let's see how these work. You'll see I've used a 30 by 30 grid, which you can adjust. Now notice what happens when I create a new element. Enterprise Architect sizes it according to the grid. Then when I move or resize the element, Enterprise Architect will also help me snap to the grid. 
either horizontally or vertically resizing the element like so. The smart placement works a little bit differently. Rather than just constraining me to the grid lines, it allows me to align elements according to neighboring elements. So moving it will help me align to the top edge or to the centers, and resizing it will help me snap to the size of a neighboring element as well. So they're handy tips for keeping the diagrams neat. To help speed up the modeling process, we can take advantage of keyboard shortcuts. For example, to quickly invoke the toolbox in place, I can hit the space bar on the diagram. Now I can easily create a new class in situ. Customer. I'll resize it using the smart placement. Now to repeat the last type of element I created, I can use control and left click or shift and left click. Here's an example. We'll create the rent class. And again, resize that with smart placement. Now to create connectors between elements, of course I can use the toolbox. For example, an association between the rental system class and the customer class. On the other hand, to quickly repeat the last connector I created, I can use the F3 key. So I'll create an association between rental system and rent, simply using the F3 key. Now with Enterprise Architect 10 came the ability to rapidly create new elements with the connectors using just the keyboard. For example, I can use Control, Shift and then left and right arrow to quickly create a class that's associated to customer. I'll do that now and create the application class. This works especially well when we're dealing with sequence diagrams as we can rapidly connect lifeline. Notice as I've created new elements I haven't been prompted for the properties which normally happens when you create a new element. The reason for this is that I've turned off the Edit on New option. It's available from Tools, Options, then the Objects page, and you can deselect the Edit on New option. Typically, if you're creating a lot of elements in a hurry, you don't want that on. Now, there'll likely come a time where we want to edit the element properties en masse, and we can use Enterprise Architect's docking windows to help us do that. The Properties window is a good example. It gives us a nice editor for general properties of an element such as name, type, stereotype, and so forth. And you'll notice it's context sensitive, so as I select a new element, it updates accordingly. Now I can permanently dock that, for example, underneath the project browser, and it's ready as I select other elements. Other views that I'll typically use, like this, are the tagged values editor and the notes window as well. So we can keep these windows in a floating position nearer to where we work, and as we select elements, they'll be ready for us to put in information. On the other hand, it can be helpful to directly edit elements, so my final tip is to take advantage of Enterprise Architect's in-place editor. I'm going to select the name compartment, and that allows me then to make an edit to the name. I'll undo that change. But I will add a new attribute, one of our domain attributes, using a keyboard shortcut, Control shift f 9 Notice that I can specify the name and type in place. Then quickly add another attribute with Control enter Then you'll notice I can come back at any time and select this attribute's compartment. I can use the context menu or the keyboard to quickly add, for example, another attribute. So very quickly we can build up the complete original picture of our domain model. So again, here are my five top tips for rapid visual modeling. You may want to show and snap to the grid to keep your elements neatly arranged on diagrams. And take advantage of the many keyboard shortcuts in Enterprise Architect. A summary of these is available from the Help menu under the Keyboard Accelerator map. And if you're in a real hurry, you may want to turn off the Edit on New option so as not to be prompted to complete element properties each time you create one. You can also position the dockable views conveniently in Enterprise Architect so you can edit properties based on the context object. And if you really like the keyboard, by all means, take advantage of Enterprise Architect's in-place editor for rapid visual modeling. We've reviewed just some of the tools available for visual modeling in Enterprise Architect. 
We considered how to take control of the diagram in Canvas by utilising some of the presentation options available, such as hiding or showing certain element compartments and other model information. We looked at some useful diagram views, the ability to view multiple diagrams at once or to use working sets to quickly regain context. And we considered a few tips for speeding up the process, for example, keyboard shortcuts and the in-place editor. So I hope you found this useful and happy modelling.